Good afternoon, everyone. It is afternoon in Melbourne, and there is a wonderful Formula One race on at the moment. But I am doing this instead because I'm making progress with this. My initial plan was to use the simulator greatest trick that you've seen me showing in the latest video, which goes from this to this out of the box in the simulator. So you get real image from a front-facing camera of the car, and then you get automatically everything segmented into different object types. You see drivable surface in this color, you see lane markings, you, you've got non-drivable sort of curb, edges, traffic lights, cars, you name it, which is great. Now, where from here? My plan was to use that greatest trick and train a model that would prove when I apply the model to a real Tesla footage, that the transition to reality could be done. And then if that transition to reality looks okay and doable, I could then focus on doing everything within the simulator. Hopefully it makes sense. So before diving into simulator and give you all the BS that everything is possible, I wanted just to do a quick test. How does it do on a real uh, ca real car footage and the way I wanted to do it is uh, I had plenty of these images I think about 17,000 pairs to be precise and I build a model from them which later I test on a couple of things and first of all I should test it on the images themselves from the simulator and possibly not the one taken from the model it's uh, when I was training the model and I also wanted to test uh, on something like this which is a real Tesla footage from a real Tesla car and then also compare how they uh, how well they both perform on simulator images versus uh, images coming from the car from the real car so with that in mind I first needed to decide okay <clears throat> what am i training for do i train for all gamut of colors that you saw before like pink the yellow and everything essentially trying to recognize every possible object in the car unfortunately i decided to focus something that made it more difficult what i wanted to do is to train the model on to recognize lane markings and i essentially used that uh, yellow color that you saw in those examples and just taking those colors and producing these masks uh, it was pretty much just taking anything in that yellow and making it white and then uh, i actually slightly modified it i wanted to make sure that i don't miss the edges whenever that maroon color was transitioning into a pink color i also uh, went through um, a trouble of identity defining those or identifying those edges and also putting this extra yellow colors color so i could treat it as a lane marking as well so i basically wanted to see the lane markings themselves but i also wanted to make artificial lane marking where the edges of the road are <clears throat> hopefully this makes sense so far and the result of this you'll see very shortly um this was an example of original image which you clearly see where the lane markings should be and where the edges of the road are what did i get i got this which when i saw this i was really impressed you see it's really picking up on everything that i wanted and if in real life if you to apply these predictions or masks uh, it would only identify those in a real situation it would show you those lane markings um, in a resulting image after you apply the model great right we also needed to test it on a number of images not just this one and that that's how i fired up a loop to come up with this video where there is a number of simulator generated images well up, up, fed into the model and you see what what is coming up yeah it's 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 okay <laughs> it's it's not quite there so as as far as predictions are concerned um the resulting masks that i was supposed to get 
for men to cover anything that is not a lane marking, but you can, you can see there is quite a lot of road surface and many things, including cars and stuff that should not should be covered in black, but they, but it's not. However, the good news is um, even the, what, what this means is the model needs to be trained further either on more images or go through more iterations or epochs as they call them in neural networks. Um, so that is good. Now let's go and look at uh, how the model went on a real Tesla footage. And obviously we're not processing it as a video, we're processing it as a frame by frame and making prediction on every single frame. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's sort of the same. It's already recognizing most of the lane markings, but a bit more. And as I said before, the good news that the quality of these predictions are very similar to the quality that you saw on the gen uh, images generated by the simulator, which means if I improve the model on the simulator images, I think I can generally make a conclusion that th this transition to reality will become possible, which is great news for us, which means I can focus on uh, my initial plan and start doing things in the simulator itself. But let's just recap all the observations that I've made as part of this process. As I said before, the model is not great, but it's okay. Um, and of course, the greatest news is because the performance of the model mod of the model looks very similar on real images versus simulator images. That means, with the improvement of the model on the simulator images, we should expect the same improvement when we apply or test the model on real images. Hopefully, that makes sense, and that's why I'm not watching Formula One race. That's why I'm doing this video for you. So I wanted to share this great news with you. As I said, further training will dramatically improve the model and the results should be a lot better. And the question is, do I have enough time to improve the model or because it's so tempting for me to jump in the simulator and show you um, a few more videos, useful videos about simulator and also try start training something that is actually closer to self-driving than the computer vision part. I should also focus, uh, if I were to improve the model, I should also focus on more difficult conditions because you saw those reflections in the road that were unfortunately picked up by the model as lane markings and they shouldn't be. So I should definitely focus on um, making those uh, more into training the model. What I found by graphics card is not good enough for the semantic models because this is NVIDIA 3060 Ti and I, I just couldn't use it because the size of the batch of images that you load every time, it needs to load the whole thing and it can't. And therefore it says, I'm sorry, um, gives me error. So I had to go and uh, train the model in the CPU only mode, which means what you saw in front of you took 30 hours um, and I had to interrupt it after Epoch 5, which is like, I wanted to do 20, but I would probably have to wait for another two or three days for that to finish. I might just do it as an experiment later, but as you can see, the kind of sucks. You, you buy a graphics card exactly for this reason and you can't use it for when you need it. It's like, well, you've got a fast car, but when you need it for a race, you, you have to jump in a tank and because that's what can get, get you there. And that's what I had to do. I had to use the tank, the CPU. The other observation, computer vision uh, is actually very green area. When I was looking for a solution for, for this, well, I can't, I can't say it's a trivial model, but it sort of makes sense. I've got these images, make these images from them. It's not that simple, my dear friends. And uh, it's like you've got, you're a mad scientist and all you've got is zero and ones. Um, like, I feel like uh, in 2023, there should be more done and more tools available to solve these issues. But when you start Googling things, uh, you, you actually see very little snippets of how things are done well. And if you copy someone else's model, it's very specific to their case. And even in semantic segmentation for cars, the things that I've seen, uh, they, they're not quite um, there yet. So there is no clean solution. Maybe all of those data scientists work for Teslas and 
you know, BMWs and Mercedeses of the world, because, you know, they all use very raw neural network code and um, build something from scratch. Well, I think there is a great opportunity if you want to go into this space and make some order in, in, in there and get, make it, take it to the next level. Um, it's all science, but like it looks to be very far from engineering and it needs to be down to engineering level so the car companies can actually use this stuff. And unfortunately, they, well, they are where they, where they are now. That's why I'm doing this. All right. What are we going to do next? Because we sort of concluded this transition to reality is possible. And I know it's not 100% that uh, that footage on a real Tesla kind of not quite there, but <coughs> excuse me, it's exactly the same as um, uh, what the model is doing on, on simulator trained uh, images. And therefore, if I improve that again, uh, I, I think I can rely on this to be done better and I think it's possible. So you can question that, but I'm moving on to jump and do stuff in the simulator itself. And as far as my objective there is concerned, what I'm trying to do is to say my final results should be the car drives from point A to point B, which is where I wanted to start from and go to in heavy traffic, in difficult weather condition, day, night, everything. And it gets there without having an accident or driving over a, a pedestrian, any of the, those bad things. Uh, so that's the objective. What it will use as input is the footage from the front facing camera. However, it's not a raw camera that I was building here, right? Because we assume that that transition between the RGB normal camera into semantically segmented images is possible. And that's what that model should do. So I will start with those semantically segmented images as my input. And then I train my self-driving solution, whatever it will be. I'm looking forward to get into it. Any questions, hit me with the comments below. If you want me to show you some of those uh, examples, how I've trained the model, let me know. I wasn't planning for now because those tutorials can go forever. I am happy to share the code, uh, but in the next few videos, we're going to go into how do we actually do self-driving in a simulator. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.